episode of the Minding My Temple podcast, and I am your host, Tasha Temple. Welcome back to the space where life meets balance. And today, I'm going to dedicate this entire episode to self-care. And that's because it has been a big topic that keeps coming up for me and people that I talk to and in areas of my life and specifically for me because I'm not so sure I've been doing a really, really good job at maintaining my own self-care and mental health lately. And so I thought that it would be a good segue into the summertime because I feel like it's so much easier to give ourselves self-care in the summer. And maybe I just think that because summer's my favorite season of the year. I know you're thinking like, what is so hot? I just love the heat. I love the humidity. Yeah, I just, I love summer. Love, love, love summer. And since it's upon us now, coming here in the next month, I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about self-care. So first and foremost, we have to dive into this segment I love to call Minding My Business. This is a segment where I talk about what I'm specifically doing in my life to navigate through my self-care so that I can share with you guys my challenges and share with you guys how I'm getting through it and how I am honoring myself to take care of myself. I know sometimes it's very hard for us to put ourselves as a priority and it's imperative because if you cannot take care of yourself or you're not feeling your best self or you know you just have so many other things that take precedence before you you're gonna burn yourself out honey you're gonna burn yourself out and then when you're burned out guess what you're not a help or support to anyone else in your life and I always have the idea that when I'm my best self I can be my best self for the people around me and the world only what's the word I want to use the world rejoices when I am my best self because it's a gift. There's only ever going to be one Tasha Temple ever in the history of the world. And when I am not myself and I'm not being my best self, I mean, the world suffers, just to be honest, because we each have a purpose here. There's something for us all to do, something for us all to give. And those gifts that we offer to the world are all very, very different. And if I'm not able to do that, then everyone suffers, even me. And so what I'm up to this week <laughs> is kind of honoring my self-care in a way that I figure out what really brings me joy. I know for some of you guys, you're thinking, well, that should be like an easy question. And I'm like, yeah, and it's not for me. <laughs> I have a challenging time identifying the things that make me happy, the things that I like, the things that bring me joy. I'm really good at the stuff that like I'm not successful in and I'm not good at and the areas where I have my insecurities and the areas where I can like put myself down. I'm great at that. And I'm not so great at the areas of where I do well and my strengths and what makes me happy and what brings me joy and the loving things. And so I'm so used to the other side and I don't know what exactly that's about. I'm still figuring that out. I'm still uncovering that. But it was a hard question for me to answer. And so what I'm up to this week is figuring out what brings me joy. And... I do my best to write something down every day because I should have like a plethora of things that bring me joy. And as I'm sitting here thinking, maybe that I have it in my head that these things have to be so grand and magnificent that the small things don't bring me joy. But now that I'm sitting here talking to you guys, I'm realizing that the sunshine brings me joy. I'm a summertime girl, like I just said, and I love to feel the warmth on my skin and the heat beaming down on me and then the sweat beads starting to form. <laughs> and I love the heat and humidity because it makes my hair and my curls pop. And so actually, as I'm sitting here, one thing that brings me joy is the sunshine and the summertime. Look at that. Thank you guys for like giving me the opportunity to, to say that. 
because it's a real vulnerable thing for me to even talk about what makes me happy and what brings me joy because happiness and joy is a source of vulnerability and it makes me uncomfortable. And so I thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to share that. But some other things that I was able to think of that bring me joy is I really like to be creative. As you can see, look at my new little creative space here. <laughs> Makes me so, oh, it brings me joy. Sitting in my little meticulous house with all of my bohemian slash spa-like jungle-ish vacation-y themed things make me feel joyful like my little egg chair and my little plant next to it it's so comfy so that's another thing that brings me joy look at that i came up with another one as i'm talking to you guys and also in addition to that i like to be creative and this space allows me the opportunity to create i like to take pictures of nature i like to call myself a photographer i don't know how great see look I'm great at saying what I'm not great at. I'm a photographer, let's say that. And I enjoy taking pictures of nature and that's something that brings me joy. And also, I like traveling. As you guys can tell, if you're following me on the gram, it's at Minding My Temple, you'll catch all my travel and whereabouts and where is Waldo there, okay? <laughs> And I also, let me think what else brings me joy. So traveling, being creative, and I love and enjoy talking to people and teaching people about food. That really does bring me joy because I realize that the main thing that keeps us alive, most of us don't even know that much about, or we think we're doing what we think to know to be accurate and true and for our, our bodies. And we really don't know because we've never really been taught how to eat. So I really enjoy teaching people how to eat. And those are the three things. Well, actually, I named more than three. The summertime, the sun, my creative little home space. I like to travel. I like to create nature photos. And so that's what I'm working on to honor myself and my self-care this week is to identify the things that bring me joy or make me feel happy. And the reason I want to say that today is because that's going to help me segue into what we're talking about today. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about managing our mood because we can't avoid our emotions. We can't avoid our feelings. And a lot of times we try to push those feelings and push our emotions to the side in a way I can attest to that. Look, I try to push my happiness and joy away because sometimes I'm not so sure I'm allowed to feel joyous and happy or even if I deserve to. And so I realized that a hu as a human being, we have a gamut of feelings and emotions that we all have been designed to experience. And we often, or society often tells us, you can't feel this, you can't, you know, can't feel that, you can't show this emotion, you can't show that emotion, or there's certain ways we should or should not, see my air quotes, should or should not be navigating through these feelings. And really, I wanna talk about how to navigate through those things in a way that's sustainable and relatable and balanced and allows you a space to have a human experience. And I'm gonna tie back into the conversation those things that I talked about earlier that bring me joy because I'm gonna task you guys with doing something very similar so that we can all feel some level of excitement every single day. Okay. Let's talk about managing our moods. So first I wanna talk about some moods that are often discussed and oftentimes are shamed. And I will be honest, in my experience of life, two things that I struggle with is anxiety and depression. Yes, me. I know you're thinking, what? Yeah, like I'm a normal human being and I do have a challenging time navigating through thoughts of anxiety and feelings of depression. And so over the years, I've done my best to create a toolbox that I can grasp from when those thoughts and feelings come up. And sometimes those tools aren't very helpful or sometimes in life I've moved through certain things that I need new tools. And we'll talk about how to create your toolbox or how to use the tools in the toolbox. Cause sometimes guess what? I may not know how to use a drill, even though I have one, right? 
So we're gonna figure that all out together today. So let's just first talk about some basic definitions. So I'm gonna keep it real simple and real easy for you guys to understand because when we talk about these things, talking about it at a high level, I don't even understand that. And so me as a licensed professional counselor, yes, I'm also a licensed professional counselor and I'm a dietitian, y'all. And so I wanna be able to talk about it in a way you can understand. So first let's talk about what is anxiety. So anxiety, simply put, is the fear of the future. Now, who knows the future? I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Nobody knows the future. And so there's this constant fear of what's supposed to happen tomorrow, what's happening in a minute, what's happening in an hour. And especially as we've all lived through this pandemic, we have no clue what's around the corner and what's coming tomorrow. I mean, nobody thought that at the beginning or top of 2020 that we would be living through a pandemic, right? And so that has created a lot more anxiety for people than what we would have admitted to before. And so let's talk about the definition for depression. Depression is I'm stuck in the past. Like I keep reliving the past thinking I could do things differently. And so when I can't change the things in the past that causes me a level of sadness and depression that is challenging to navigate through. So that's the two things. So remember, anxiety is always related to the future and depression's always related to the past. Look at how easy that is, how simple I made that for you guys. Now, let's talk about two things that can exacerbate or increase your level of anxiety and or depression. It's that thing we call stress. <laughs> now, I like to keep stress as a way to describe things that's neutral. Stress is simply our response or reaction to change. It's not negative, it's not positive. I know a lot of times we're like, I don't wanna be stressed out, that person's stressing me out, this about stress, and we always have this negative attitude, negative conversations, negative connotation about stress. And stress is simply my response or my reaction to change. Now, what is change, right? Like change is everywhere. I move my arms up and down. My arm goes up, it goes down, that's change, right? I move my head to the right and to the left, that's change. The sun goes up every day and goes down, that's change. Today's whatever day of the week and tomorrow's a different day of the week, that is change. So every single human being alive is experiencing change in every second and every minute. So newsflash, and not a newsflash to scare you, but newsflash, there is no way in the world you can ever not live with stress. It's not a thing. So for me to be waiting for this point where I'm not gonna be stressed out, guess what? That's not how it works. You're gonna experience stress every single day. Like it goes from nine o'clock to 9.01 to 9.02. It's a constant evolving thing that is change. And stress is our ability to either react or respond to it. So your control is within your reaction or your response. And so if I have the ability to respond to my stress, that helps me to navigate through my anxiety and depression. Let me explain a little bit further. When I respond, that is a thoughtful thing. I thought it through, comes from the brain. If I react, that's my emotion and my reaction to something. That means it comes from like the heart within. And so thought is usually a controlled thing. Emotion is typically what just naturally occurs. So it's uncontrolled. And so the goal is to do my best to respond to my stress, have a thoughtful response rather than have an emotional reaction. Here's why. So your brain does not have a place where emotion and thought happens at the same time. So you always wonder why people do things when they're in emotional places. It's because the thought side of the brain turns off. They don't work at the same time. I know we think they do and they do not, just so you know. And so it's okay to have an emotional reaction to my stress. However, I wanna make sure that when I'm navigating with other people, that I'm doing things that's going to get me what I want, right? So if I wanna have a peaceful conversation, I wanna do my best to be able to move from reacting and emoting, 
emotion and reaction into response and thought. And so that takes practice. The first thing that I need to understand though, is I need to give myself permission to have a human experience. Because if I'm having a challenging time, even recognizing or even allowing myself to have certain emotions, there's no way I can even recognize that I'm having a reaction because I won't even allow myself to then recognize that that emotion's even happening. And so you have to first be willing to give yourself permission to feel angry, to feel sad, to feel depressed, to feel happy, to feel discouraged, to feel frustrated, to feel disappointed, to feel like all of these different things that we're all designed to feel. And I think the reason why it's a we struggle with some emotions is because, don't kill me for saying this, but I feel like we live in a society of positive bullying. And yeah, I said it. I think what happens is, and when people start to feel depressed or frustrated or discouraged or disappointed, sad, you know, we encourage them so heavily. Oh, you gotta feel happy. Turn it around. You gotta feel this way. You gotta feel happy. Go do something that makes you feel joy. Like sometimes we do not allow people the opportunity to simply experience their emotion. And then when we don't allow them to experience their emotion, they feel bad for even feeling sad or even feeling depressed or even feeling angry when it's simply a human experience that we all have. It's simply normal to feel angry. It's simply normal to feel sad. It's simply normal to feel depressed. It's simply normal to feel any of these things. It's when we start to live out our life and our responses through those emotions that becomes a challenge. And so the goal is to be able to move from being aware or at first allowing myself to feel this emotion and then recognizing I'm feeling it so then I can then shift to making a decision about how to then respond or interact or do the next step in my life even though I'm feeling angry. I can feel angry and still have a balanced response. If I know that I'm angry, I can make a choice on how I respond. And the practice is, is moving from emotion to thought. And I tell people the easiest thing to do when you feel any type of emotion is in order to move from that reaction to that response, say your phone number backwards. <laughs> You're like, oh, where's my phone number? Uh, wait. So taking that pause to recognize the emotion gives you an opportunity to move into the thought so now you can have a response. That's how you navigate through stress. You don't try to get rid of the stress. You just try to have a thoughtful response to the stress instead of having an emotional reaction. And then you can be able to navigate through that stress with, if my stress becomes manageable, not go away, then now I can navigate through my anxiety and depression in a different way. Does that make sense? I hope it did. Because that's the only way I can think about it is I just have to remember that they don't happen at the same time and I'm a human being. And so I can only control what I can control, right? And so I might not be able to control me feeling angry, but I can control how I respond and how I interact with others when I'm angry because I have little tools in my box that will help me shift from feeling to thought. And remember, the one thing I always tell people is say your phone number backwards. So if I'm starting to feel upset and I start to feel like, you know, my hands start to clamp together and my heartbeat starts to go up and I just start to feel hot inside, then I need to say, oh, I'm feeling angry and I need to say my phone number backwards before I say anything to anybody or before I make any major decisions because I realize I cannot make a logical response when I'm in emotion. And then once I'm able to make a logical response, I can now then navigate through my anxiety and my depression in a different way. Okay, so let's also move forward. So let's think about also some daily practices. So one of those daily practices or one of those daily tools you can put in your box is going to be say your numbers backwards. But also let's start practicing honoring our self care by making sure we do something that's enjoyable every single day, every day. I had this conversation with somebody that they were saying that their gratification was going to be deferred because they had not 
met or reached all their goals just yet. And I was like, who said that we have to defer our gratification until our goals are met? Like who makes up these rules in our lives? Guess who makes up the rules? You do. You make up your own rules for your own life to fit you in a box to keep you safe and comfortable. And guess what, y'all? There is no box. You get to create spaces that support what you want. You just gotta get really clear about what it is you want and then create a space to allow the things that you want to happen. And so I'm creating a space to do my best to navigate through feeling joy and feeling happiness. And so in honor of my self care, you guys do this with me. I decided to do something every single day that made me feel like I was like a 10 year old kid. Yes, every day, like something playful, something fun, something that gave me a little bit of sense of joy. And so guess what that one thing is I do every day? I eat a piece of chocolate, y'all. <laughs> I eat a piece of chocolate. My favorite chocolate is the Lint Chocolate Ball. So if you ever want to send me anything, send me some Lint Chocolate Balls, you guys. I take one every day and I take my time eating it. I like break it into a few different pieces. And it might even be a 10, 20, 30 second thing I do every day, but I look forward to it. It makes me feel all yummy and gooey inside. And it gives me that little sense of enjoyment like I was 10 years old. And for your self care, you've got to do something like that every day. When I take that little thing or that little moment of chocolate for me, it makes me realize like I do know what enjoyment feels like. I know what joy feels like. I know what happiness feels like. And so if it comes my way in any other circumstance or any other instance, I can recognize it and recognize that emotion. And I know how to give it to myself. Like I know where to get these things from if I allow myself and give myself the permission to feel that. And so what I would recommend is every single day, you gotta have a daily piece of enjoyment. So find out what yours is. And if you don't know, guess what? You get to go out here and start to do a whole bunch of different things and try to figure it out and find it out. And so, oh, here goes another thing that brings me joy, riding my bike. And so over the weekend, I took a whole long little bike ride. And so make sure you're aware of those things that bring you joy, because when I'm in the space and in the moment of experiencing joy and happiness, I'm actually not then also experiencing anxiety and depression. And so it doesn't mean that anxiety is not happening in my life. It doesn't mean that depression isn't happening in my life. But here's the thing. These things can happen at the same time. I don't know about y'all, but those of you guys who live here in Atlanta, Georgia, like I do, it can rain on one side of the street and be sunny on the next side of the street at the same daggone time. So why would you think that you couldn't experience different emotions and different feelings at the same time? I can be anxious and joyful at the same time. I can have my chocolate ball and be experiencing enjoyment and joy and happiness at the same time while I'm being fearful and anxious of if COVID's coming back. They can happen at the same time if you allow yourself and give yourself permission to have a human experience. Remember, there's not a box. Yes. One other thing I wanted to say about anxiety and depression is a lot of times, because you guys know I've got to circle it back to food, when we're experiencing heightened emotions, and that could be anxiety, it could be depression, it could be anger, it could be happiness, it could be joy, it could be excitement, any emotion, a lot of times we attach that to food, okay? And so when you're having these feelings, if you often turn to food, you got to be careful because Food is not a tool that we want to put in our toolbox, right? I know I said my one little piece of chocolate, but that's just my one little piece of chocolate. I'm talking about, are we always having happiness and anger and sadness and always associating food with that? I do want to be clear that we want to have other tools like saying my phone number backwards, or I want to have other tools like standing outside in the grass with no shoes on, with your feet in the grass. I'm telling you guys, it's one of the best things ever. Another thing in my toolbox is gardening. I like to get outside. If those of you guys who don't know me or do know me, I have a farm here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's called Grape Roots. Come check us out. And that brings me joy and excitement. And it also helps me to manage and navigate my stress and anxiety. You do want to make sure that you have some very basic shower-like tools in your box. When I say shower-like, 
They're the tools that don't necessarily seem all that much fun and bring excitement, but they're the tools that are necessary for us to be able to go out there and be effective every day. I'll give you an example. So for me, like meditation and journaling, I don't be like, oh God, I'm so excited to meditate and I'm so excited to journal. I'm so, yeah, let's get it. I'm not excited about those things, but I also do know that those things allow me the opportunity to be my best self. And so I do them just like showering, like, you know, I, I want to get out here and smell good. So it's like one of those daily things that's necessary for me to, you know, be an effective human being, but they're not things I look forward to, but those are daily practices. But in addition to that, you want to have those things that are enjoyable, but we want to try to make sure that they're not surrounded by food. But here's one thing I want to be really mindful of when we're talking about food and mood foods and eating foods in regards to our mood, be mindful to eat when you're hungry, please. Please recognize like I'm feeling happy, that doesn't mean go eat. I'm feeling sad, that doesn't mean go eat. Eat when you're hungry. And then make sure if you are eating in those instances that you're having the right portion. Portion, portion, portion matters. Portion matters. Because if we're overeating, that's when we're talking about issues with health concerns or altering our health outcomes. So remember those two points, especially when we're talking about emotional eating, is try to do your best to eat when you're hungry, not when you're feeling an emotion. And then if you are eating when you're feeling an emotion, to keep it to the right portion. Please, please, please. Now, there are some foods that are known to boost your mood. And so I will say, if you can incorporate these foods on a daily basis or within your meals, they have been known to actually make people feel better. And so you'll hear a couple of things that I incorporate. So the first one is chocolate. <laughs> and that's why I add it in daily and because it is known to improve mood and specifically dark chocolate does. And so try to have like one to two small pieces. If you get like the little dove squares or some little Hershey Kisses, just like three, they do actually boost mood. Who would have thunk? And that's why I do one piece of chocolate a day. Y'all ain't know I had a whole other purpose. Look at that. Uh, you can try bananas. Bananas are a great source of natural sugar. Sugar does provide us with energy, which makes us feel a little better during the day. It has B6, it has prebiotics, and all those work together to help stable the blood sugar in your body and it helps you to boost your mood. Um, you can also try berries. They're one of my favorite foods. I love just cutting up strawberries and blueberries. They're full of antioxidants, so they're gonna help you with inflammation in the body. They're gonna help you with anti-aging. They are full of fiber. They are full of flavor. And those are those foods that you can have a whole cup and feel full and feel satisfied and feel like you got your sweet tooth fixed. And guess what? They're low in calories. Yes. And then another food that's great for the mood are nuts and seeds. The catch with nuts and seeds is you have to be really careful about portion size. So a quarter of a cup is 200 calories. Now remember those cup of berries is like 50, but they do help with satisfying like the salt craving. They are great for managing depression. So you can add, you know, nuts and seeds on top of yogurt, on top of oatmeal or by themselves, but they're also great for helping you navigate those symptoms of depression. And so try to add chocolate, bananas, berries, nuts and seeds to your diet to boost your mood. And one thing I will say to you guys, please make sure that you're doing something for yourself every day, honoring your self care, do something at least for five to 10 minutes that feels good to you and is enjoyable for you every single day. Take it from me, life gets tough, life gets hard. And all I can say is take care of yourselves. And if you have any questions about how to take care of yourself, you can always tune in to the Minding My Temple podcast. Just follow me on Instagram at Minding My Temple. And you can always find any of my videos on YouTube. Just search engine and put in Minding My Temple. Thank you guys for always listening. And